I'm going to go and start the recording. Uh, and uh, welcome. Welcome to St. Louis County Library's uh, virtual program, Financial Databases and Education Resources. Uh, so this is going to going to cover um, a couple things. Just uh, this program, we hope to show you uh, the various financial databases St. Louis County Library has available to you as a library card holder. Uh, the databases can be used for various types of financial planning, such as college savings, retirement savings, banking, and insurance scouting, and by independent investors. There are lots of tools and information contained in these databases. We will be showing off many of the tools. Uh, and any search or use of these tools, display of information, mention, or choice of financial product in this program is merely for demonstration only and does not constitute any type of financial advice or endorsement. Uh, you're encouraged to do your own research and engage in your own continuing, continuing financial education. And when necessary, contact and consult with the appropriate financial professionals. This presentation is not individual investment advice or financial advice. So don't, don't take advice from me as to where to put your money. Just take advice from me about how to research where to put your money. Uh, so we have lots of, uh, lots of databases. Uh, let's go and get started. Uh, we're about three minutes in. Uh, it's potentially going to be a rather long program. So uh, we'll get uh, rolling pretty quickly here. All right, let's go and start um, with some financial education resources. So I'm gonna stop my recording here for a second and use another device for recording. Okay, we're, we're back to recording. I'm gonna use a different device for recording. Sorry about that. We can pull things up here. All right, let's start with some educational resources. Um, all, the, all the educational resources I'm going to show you are, um, are, uh, are available through the, through the St. Louis County Library website. Um, and it's kind of adjuncts and the databases associated with that. And I'm going to show you also some government, uh, uh, government sources as well for our education. Um, let's go ahead and start with... Um, Go ahead and start with uh, our first resource here is Weiss Ratings, and I'm going to go and op open these up, and I'll show you how to access these. These are the databases here. Uh, if you go to the St. Louis County Library website, that's slcl.org. Uh, if you go to the Research tab, we have um, several different options available, uh, users and different types. But for us, we're going to look at business owner and investors. So a lot of these resources are for uh, the kind of personal investor, however large or small. Uh, the first one is for small business and employment, but the databases we're going to be looking at are primarily here in this finance and investing. You can see the databases here. The first database I want to point out is called Weiss Financial Rating Series Online is its full title. I'll just be calling it Weiss Financial Ratings uh, throughout this program. Uh, within here, uh, we do have um, fin the financial literacy tools. We have consumer guides, financial literacy basics, uh, free financial planning tools. So it's tools and other information about how to kind of uh, get you started with investing, find out how to manage debt, how to uh, make and stick to a budget. And these are small uh, kind of PDF uh, short handouts uh, that are going that you can look at. So if you're looking at, uh, so how to start a 401k, for instance, if you just click on the front page there, you'll see this book has 104 pages, uh, full color pages, and there'll be um, broken down little, uh, quick kind of coverage of how to begin going in a 401k and how to research using a 401k if your employer offers that or however else you want may want to take that. So a lot of information here on this uh, page. But let's say you want to find out something else here in Weiss Financial Ratings. Um, so financial literacy, how to become an investor. 
Uh, the same kind of thing. What is investing in bro brokerage firms? You can find out what type of investor you might want to be, uh, how to kind of shop for and define financial investors. It's a lot of information here in uh, Weiss Financial Ratings Series. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is going to be Morningstar. Um, and all these databases, these three main databases, I'm going to get, get back to here uh, later on and show you how to use these a little bit more uh, as a financial uh, research tool. And if I'm speaking too quiet or anything like that, just go and type in the chat. Or if you want to clear up, just go and ask me questions in the chat. I'll be able to read it. Uh, and this is Morningstar Investment Research Center. Uh, you can see they have a planning and education section. And in this planning and education section, uh, there is a um, there is this investing classroom, which will have several different courses, uh, some video courses, some courses that are just reading uh, on different types of investment tools, other uh, ways to invest. Uh, so on some videos, information on how to uh, browse stocks. Let's say you're interested in the exchange uh, transfer funds, and you want to go into the ETF and look at courses on ETFs here. Um, you can see there's a bunch of different courses on ETFs, and they go from uh, basic to a little bit more complex as you go along. And real quick, quick courses, you, you just click on one, and you can see it here. So you can begin by taking a quiz, or we can go back, and actually you can, uh, some of these have high, higher level courses. So this is level 100, this is kind of basic courses here. And we can go back to courses and you can search for courses. You can do, let's see if they can look up capital gains and see if there's any courses on something like capital gains or anything like that. So here we are, courses that uh, contain information on capital gains. So there's Morningstar Investment Research Center, uh, some education on that. Our next one is going to be Value Line uh, Online. And that's also here in this investment page. So I logged in previously to these databases. And typically when you log into these databases, they're going to ask, when you first click on them, they're going to ask you for your library, for your name, your last name, your library card number, and your PIN to let you know you're a St. Louis County Library uh, customer there. Um, and here in Value Line, you can see there's these tabs across the top. And the tab in Investment Education is where you're going to find most of your educational uh, tools for financial ed education. Um, tools on letting you know not necessarily where, where to invest, but, but what the terms of investment mean, how to kind of like stage your investment, and, and uh, options like that. So featured educational articles. Uh, but there's also, if we just go on this top part here, some how-to guides, how to pick stocks, plan an investment strategy. And then Value Line University is mostly what I want to point you to. If you're looking at just pure kind of educational resources, uh, it has an investment basic, basics, investment strategy, building a portfolio, and how to study a stock. So you can get, you can strengthen yourself on that if you need to catch up on that, or if you need to even just start doing that. Uh, these are very, very valuable tools. All these from the, the Wise Financial uh, Literacy Series the Morningstar Center uh, to this Value Line University. I've gone through these myself and have learned a lot uh, through these sources as to how to begin investing both for myself and uh, doing investment for my, uh, for my kids, for hopefully for a future in college or wherever they may wanna take their, those investments in the future. All right, uh, so you can see I have some more, um, some other, some other options here. So LinkedIn Learning, Gale Courses, and the St. Louis County Library uh, Catalog and Overdrive and Libby. So let's look at uh, LinkedIn Learning, which is a resource the St. Louis County Library has. And that's gonna be, um, just begin on the uh, library webpage, slcl.org. Go into research again. You can see where I took us before the business owner and investor section. Uh, if we wanna go to the online learner section, this is where e-courses are. So any types of e-course e you, you may wanna take. Um, so there's just some stuff on crafting, some driving tests one, but the main one I'm going to point out is, uh, is this, uh, LinkedIn learning, which used to be called lynda.com. Uh, if you go into here, uh, you, you, you can even get LinkedIn learning on an app. Let me just get started. I'm going to put in my library card number, which is already plugged in there. So with link. LinkedIn Learning, it's, it's entirely fo focused on tech technical skills, but they also have investing uh, 
information as well. Um, so if you want to do, we'll just do financial education. We'll just look up financial education as a keyword here. And just to let you know, I am recording this and this will be available on YouTube uh, if you want to uh, visit it later on and come back to it and also be um, mailing out this, this, the, this live show as well. And I'll have a hand, hand up that I'll mail out. You'll probably get that sometime tomorrow and I'll email out the link to the YouTube uh, video in about three business days. So here's a lot of inf information courses on uh, a lot of different types of financial information here. So let's say you want to do maybe look look for something uh, more more specific. Here's equities market, and you want to kind of research maybe the equities market to figure out how to get yourself stronger in there. Um, let's say this is sometimes focused on technical stuff. It's not looking at that. So let's tap stocks. So up here, of course, how to invest in stocks. So how to start investing, financial basics everyone should know, and other stuff if you want to get more technical. Uh, look, looking into Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and a lot of other courses here in LinkedIn Learning. Uh, another information is going to be in Gale Courses. So I'm going to close that, close out LinkedIn Learning and we'll see Gale Courses also has some uh, financial education classes. Gale Courses is set up as, I like to call it a little bit set up more like a, your traditional course where it has a start time and you kind of visit it uh, out of sequ sequ sequence of days. And then at the end of that sequence of days, um, you'll have learned that and there'll be uh, sort of like um, egg, egg, egg exams, so to speak, um, and you can review that. So um, here's accounting and finance is typically where you're going to find that, personal finance and investment. So if you want to find out about personal financing, all the courses will, will be listed under here under this accounting and finance section. Stocks, bonds, and investing, oh my. Uh, if you're looking at real estate investing, personal finance, introduction to stock options, um, uh, just kind of how some general money management information. So these are the uh, personal finance and, finance and investment courses in uh, Gale courses. And you can see they have specific start dates about once a month. Uh, the course is uh, the course is uh, 24 hours. So there's about 24 courses in for each month. So you start and you just go along. And the course is kind of varied in length, but they typically uh, run about run about an hour for each course. All right. Uh, let's look at how to kind of use the catalog a little bit for searching for books. Um, if you want to uh, search for books, so the catalog, once again, the St. Louis County Library webpage, uh, here in this Booksy Media and More, we can leap to the catalog that we can look at. Um, Let's just look up a keyword, finance, and see what the results are. Ah, it wants to know my library card number. I knew it would ask that sometime. It logs me out about every hour, so. So here's personal finance 101, uh, personal finance in your 50s and all in one for dummies. So a lot of for dummies books show up, the wisdom of finance. Uh, so there's lots of books here. So, so, so say you find a book you're interested in or mildly interested in. So your personal finance in your 20s and 30s for dummies, for instance, uh, you can go down here and particularly I like to kind of like narrow it down uh, in subject. So if you just click on subject again, it's gonna have all the books classified under that subject. Uh, so there's a Susie Orman book on the top here. Uh, some other information about how, how to use social security, kind of maximize your social security returns. Uh, a Dave Ramsey book. So a few classics. Um, that are in here, um, how to look at stocks, best 100 stocks to buy in 2020. And we'll look at information that some of our databases has. They, they kind of mirror this and kind of echo some of these uh, books here. Um, and we'll look at Over, Over, Overdrive and Libby, which is another resource that, that we have. It's ebooks, and most of those will show up here in the catalog as well, but kind of how to search this. Um, and I want to kind of start to get towards how to use um, particularly Overdrive and, and Libby. You can uh, access magazines. And so particularly you can access uh, financial magazines. Of course, you can access books, ebooks, audio books, uh, but there are magazines available here. So we can see there's a magazine section along these tabs along the top. And the collections um, narrowed down by subject. And there should be business and finance magazines here. And it does have a lot of in, in international magazines as well, as you can see right away from our search at the top. 
but you can see it's got uh, magazines like The Economist, which is more of a news magazine, but it does have a lot more uh, options for investing, like Kiplinger's Personal Finance, uh, the magazine Money, Entrepreneur, Money, Money Weeks. So we start getting into uh, some business and financial uh, magazines here. And you can just, just do that, and you can borrow uh, if you'd like. Uh, you just click on the borrow option, and then that magazine will show up full color uh, on your home computer or on your um, or on your uh, mobile device, like a tablet or your um, your mobile phone. So once I go in here, and we'll just see this. I'll go and check check this one out, and I'll borrow it for a short term. Just to show you an example of what these magazines look like. So we can screw in full color for these magazines. Uh, we, we, we can also use in just uh, text. We can go by chapters if you want. So list, listing of uh, articles. Um, it's a lot of action here. It's uh, this resource overdrive. And Libby is what I would recommend you uh, would place on your phone or suggest you place on your phone or a tablet. Uh, if you check something out on Overdrive, it will be available for you in Libby as well. Those, those, those accounts are tied together. They're the same company and they cross. All right. Um, we also have, of course, you can stay up to date using Overdrive and Libby with those uh, with those financial magazines. We also have uh, daily options, is including um, that includes Factiva and Flipster. So if we go to the library web page again, um, and a lot of these um, are going to be in the ebooks and media, but with this research option, if you know exactly the resource you're going for, I like to use this option in the research option, go to the resources A to Z. And if you're looking for uh, Factiva, uh, we can open up, just go to F uh, in the alphabet, find Factiva. Um, unfortunately, it is not working today. Well, fact, Factiva has a lot of um, financial journals, and I have them highlighted here. Uh, and they also cover not only do they cover these uh, U.S. sources, uh, they also cover inter international sources um, that are available. A lot of news information, so you can stay up to date. And with Factiva, you can even um, you can search a ticket ticker number and get news articles from around the world where that ticker number might show up, or search search a company, uh, and that'll sort out it's 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 a very good resource for that let me try this one more time i'll have to put in a ticket for this sorry about that um and this is what i had here flipster uh which is also e-media it's it's another magazine a resource like like we saw with overdrive and libby uh if we go into flipster here and this is in that e-media section of the, of the web, of their website um, here we have a business option, right there at the top, it's alphabetical. And we have Forbes, Black Enterprise, and Money Magazine. So Flip, Flipster is another option if you're looking for magazines. And of course, you can use it for news and stuff like that, which can also inform your financial decisions. All right, let's move on. Um, so, so we know how to stay up to date, how to find a couple financial educational resources in the library resources, take some courses on financial ed education. Uh, let's look at some of the resources uh, that are provided through, through the uh, U.S. government. Um, let's go and start with in, in, in investor.gov. I'll just click on these, and once again, you'll get um, so the, uh, a, a handout of this as well. Um, Financial tools and calculators. So there's an in introduction to investing. So if you're inter interested in investing, uh, this is run by the Securities and Exchange Commission, which is a regulatory commission. Uh, but you can begin to uh, learn about what investing is and about risk. Uh, there's also they also offer a lot of these financial tools and calculators. So if you want to calculate some compound compound interest, uh, if you want to set a savings goal, uh, or a college savings calculator, which we get into a uh, resource I'm going to show you later, we'll have a really great college savings calculator. Uh, and that's Morningstar, but we'll, we'll get to that towards the end of the uh, presentation here. So our next resource uh, is consumer.gov. There's a lot of different options, manage and use your money wisely, uh, use credit, credit and loans carefully, uh, protect your identity and money, uh, how to protect yourself from identity theft, and this is run by the Federal Trade Commission. Um, then mymoney.gov, this is FDIC. 
This is the financial the financial literacy and education Com commission. Um, there's uh, five points. They've got tips and strategies. Anybody researching a clearinghouse? It's this really has more. Um, it has a lot more articles uh, pub published by uh, government res resources, uh, which talk about uh, um, financial capability related topics and such. Uh, if you're an educator or teacher, uh, curriculum and lesson plans for teaching and other stuff for uh, younger people if you uh, want to get people in interested in uh, financial literacy. Uh, this F F FDIC.gov uh, information for consumers that you can, mostly this can be used for research in banks and such, uh, but but they do have some educational stuff here. So under this consumer's option, remember about uh, reasons to open bank accounts, uh, FDIC, state visits, some information from the FDIC. And last uh, but not least is consumerfinance.gov. This is the uh, Consumer Financial and Protection uh, Bureau. Uh, a lot of information for consumer education. Um, so topics on making loans, topics on savings, topics on student loans. Just, just mo mostly this is uh, focused on, uh, on debt amelioration uh, and how to learn about what, how debt can affect you, but also about how, how savings and other things can, can affect you. So for instance, um, if you're interested in information, very simplified, very consumer app, consumer accessible uh, inf inf information about how that works. Uh, if you're interested in, in the information, it's it's very narrowed down to this Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> speak up. I'll put the mic a little bit closer to my face, and I do kind of mumble. Sorry, sorry for that. I didn't see that pop up until now. I'll try to put it just a little bit closer to my face here. Adjust my mic. There we are. Okay. So now we've gone through the edu educational resources. Does anybody have any questions about the ed educational resources before we move on to uh, each uh, each one of our three databases that I'm going to highlight today? Um, okay. If you do ha have that come up, go and like I say, type type it in there. And sorry, I didn't see that uh, that pop up quicker. All right. Um, so the first database I'm going to point us to is uh, uh, Weiss fi Financial Ratings. And I had already op op opened that here, but I'm going to go and walk through uh, how to access that one more time. Uh, so let's go to the St. Louis County Library website. That's slcl.org. If we go to the research section, and this is where you'll find all those databases. And you scroll down here to the business owner and investor, and you click on business owner and investor, and you go in these tabs here, finance and investing. We'll have the Weiss Financial Rating Series online. Just click on the name, and it op opens up there. It's going to op open up to the same page that, that you normally get to, and so we'll have to log in uh, to the to the page. And so we we'll have to go to sign in or sign up. Now, now I'll tell you the difference in that. Signing in is kind of just grant, grants you general looking in access. Uh, there's also the option that you can sign up, which means uh, you can set up a personal account with uh, Weiss Weiss Ratings. And that allows you to create a watch list, and we'll go over that here pretty soon. So let's go and uh, sign in first. Um, oh, actually, actually, I'm already logged in, so it already knows I'm there because it has the St. Louis County Library. I'll go and do the uh, sign in option. So, if, so when you first visit, you'll want to go to the sign up option, and you want to put in your uh, name here. So. So you'll log in, you'll create a password, and then you'll click sign up. And it'll sign you up and allow you to make a, uh, a watch list. But I'm going to go and sign in to my, um, the account, not my personal account, but the account I use for the dem demonstrations on this database, which is going to use my library email and a secret password there. Can you hear me OK now? I kind of made some microphone adjustments, set up a little bit more straight. Um, so, so like it says here, the personal account is available with the library card. So with financial ratings, um, there's just a little bit about it. They, th you can see what they review here. Uh, you can search everything, uh, which is a, this is a search hall. So if you want to look for an insurance company or you want to look for your bank, so you can search for your bank here and search for other types of things. 
if you want. Um, and you can see everything they cover. And we already covered the financial literacy basics, uh, planning for the future and stuff, the consumer guides here. Uh, what we're gonna begin focusing on <coughs> is gonna, we're, we're gonna first look at the stocks homepage for uh, Weiss Financial Ratings. Um, so across the, stop, uh, across the top are various different uh, options for you. And uh, mainly let's go ahead and start with uh, looking for stocks. So the stocks, they've got a little homepage here. They've got their, your stock of the day. Uh, and this will, of course, change every every every, um, every, every business day with the, with the new stock. It's kind of what they have. They have a basic rating, uh, kind of straightforward, um, uh, rating kind of A through F. Um, and that kind of, uh, so the A and the B are kind of like, uh, are kind of rated as buy. The C is rated as hold. And the D, D E, and F are rated as uh, sell um, for what they have here. And they've got some uh, recent rating changes on this homepage, um, rating changes, recent upgrades, recent downgrades if you're researching stocks, uh, most active stocks in the day. So these are high volume stocks uh, on the day, always traded a lot dur during the day. Um, but what I wanna point out uh, a little bit uh, hard of a tool is gonna be this build a screener. So we're gonna look at how to build a screener, how to kind of get a list of uh, uh, how to search for stocks. So in here, it's kind of blunt, there's common screens, um, uh, recent screening, you can save a screening since I'm logged in. Uh, you, you can even, uh, so you can run a screen if you've already saved it, but actually we're gonna um, clear this out to do, actually we're gonna do it in here. No, move on here. We're gonna add criteria and kind of make some screenings here, uh, screen here. So some common ones that are in, entered in, this is based on data that most people search for when, when they're doing that. But we can begin to look at, so let's say we want to look at um, what a div, dividend yield was. We can add that to a criteria. So we want to get a higher dividend stock. Maybe one that uh, pays out a uh, dividend of, let's say 1%. It's kind of high, but yeah. So we can be, begin to do that and set, set that up. We can even have it max out here. We can add another criteria one. We can look at um, price. We can look at its, um, its recent closing price if we want. So we wanna buy stocks that are from $0 to, we don't have much we can invest in. So let's go and look at uh, stocks that are under $100 as a recent closing price. And let's go and narrow it down to one more criteria, maybe. We, we want stocks that are well rated by wise here, okay? So let's look at things at stocks that are C plus or better. For instance, this is a, just, to, just to show you ways that you can use a screener. So we have, we found 866 stocks that meet our uh, dividend yield criteria, our close our price, and then our rating. So we can begin to sort. Um, if you want to sort by rating to get the highest rated one, or you can sort by price if you'd like. And if you click it again, it'll sort by the highest price at the top, or you can click it and it'll have the lowest price there. Uh, and you can see what the dividend yield is if you're interested in that. So does anybody have any questions about the stock screener here? I find it really useful. Uh, and if you find a stock you're interested in, uh, just go ahead and uh, click on the stock. And that brings up the stock information here. So this will be a, a sample of the stock page. Uh, your, your recent closing price, uh, the day's change, uh, and the trading volume of that stock. A lot of other information. And you can find a lot of this stuff on, um, on things like Yahoo Finance or Google Finance or just doing a search. You can find them a lot of di different sources. But the thing that Weiss Ratings uh, gives you is it, does, is it does give you this real quick look at a rating. Uh, and, and it does give you um, its its own kind of a dis description of that. Uh, it also allows you to look at, you can look at some price history, which these other resources I mentioned uh, do have, but you can begin to look at price history uh, for the stock. You can see when the dividend was, when the dividend paid out, what the, uh, what the amount of the dividend was. Uh, you can begin to com compare the sector so this is one thing I really like about it. So the sector, it's in the inf this Oracle is an in information technology sector. And you can see how it compares against other uh, members in the sector. So this, begin, this begin, can become ways that you can uh, begin to research the stocks you're, you're interested in and begin to build um, stocks here. 
uh, or you can even compare the industry if you want. So software and services, you can see how Oracle does against other, the average player in, in this, uh, in the industry. Check out Mansfeed. Uh, if, 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 if you want, there's a, if there's something you don't understand as they're paying, you can always check out the glossary and see what those mean, what those exact meanings are. Uh, YSAF offers you how it's changed its ratings and offers you tells you how often they've, they've changed the rate, rating. So actually, they last week, they upgraded this here, this Oracle stock. So you can see how it's kind of changed through time. So you can kind of begin to research the history of the stock. Some key statistics, once again, the average such. So uh, let's move on to something else. Does anybody have any questions about the um, that there? About the screener. If you want to add it to your um, to your watch list, you can add it to your watch list. And you can see my watch list just added one to the watch list. So I'm going to show us the mutual fund screener. It's going to work very similar uh, to the previous one I showed you. So once again, here at the top, we have uh, mutual funds, and we can hop to the mutual funds. This this allows us to set up a screener just for mutual funds. So here in these mutual funds, uh, you can see the 52-week highs. Looks very similar to that stock screener page, uh, to, to the beginning page, to the home home page on the stocks. Uh, you can see the dis distribution about their mutual funds. Uh, if you want to see something quick, you can just click on the buy for the mutual funds. And of all those mutual funds that are listed, just a very simple screener. It takes us to that screener page. Just a very simple screener of the screen section, the A plus to the B minus, which is what they call a buy rating. Um, you could you can begin to if you want to start to narrow down uh, your 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 screening. A lot of mutual funds will have a minimum initial investment, so that's one thing we want to maybe look at uh, here. So I think that's in price. So here's some fund information. So it's under fund information. So minimum initial investment. But let's say you want to start investing in, in mutual funds, but you don't you don't really have that much to invest. So you can actually see these uh, buy options, and you can see how the distribution is as to what they are. And you can begin to look at. So if you just want to see uh, minimum initial investments that are under fifteen hundred dollars. So this is what it ha this is what they have li listed here. If you want to begin investing, and you don't have much to uh, begin your investing with, so we've uh, narrowed down that, and you can actually save this. If 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 you're logged in with an account, you can actually save this to an account. So we can do save, and it's saved our search. So so if we come back and we want to visit on this mutual fund, we want to go to the screeners. Go back to the screen. When we come back and visit it and want to look again, um, we can actually look at that saved option. It will have the same kind of layout that we had be be before. And in six months, this might change. It might change the rating. Uh, a fund might, might become a new fund, or the uh, fund might change its option for minimum initial investment. Some, something may change here, and so you may want to come back and visit it. Once again, you can click on the heading, and it will relist these headings for you. And if you find an um, investment you're, you're interested in, um, go and uh, click on it. And you can add it to your watch list, and we'll see that number tick up there. So I've added the Oracle before, and this new mutual fund I've added here. And in the mutual funds, uh, you can see if they pay out dividends. You can see what the expense ratio on is uh, on it is. Uh, these are things to consider when when shopping for um for for, for mutual funds. Just a little bit of uh, financial education. Uh, it's a somewhat of a higher ex expense ratio than I would look at, but um. Once again, in, in investigate that, and you, you can see how they allocate that. Once again, this uh, this column on the left will tell you some 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 information about this mutual fund. It'll show you what what uh, the mutual fund, the class category is, how it performs against that class. So it's some really interesting inf information. So this is the added value that Weiss Ratings gives you.
All right. So next thing to look at is uh, is the exchange traded funds. I'm not going to spend too long on it because um, just for timing's sake. Um, but you can see it's 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 laid out similar to the stocks fund. If you become familiar with the stocks page, the mutual page, page, th this will work very similar for you. Uh, you can see uh, uh, the e exchange traded funds that are uh, mutual high, that are 52 week high. You can see recent ratings changes. Uh, you can see recent upgrades if they have that. Someone's upgraded. Uh, you can see best uh, when you return by ETF what they have here. Uh, just click see all and it'll give you a much longer list. So they kind of like have that screener laid out to a pre-made search. And you can of course save this search if you want to, uh, but they have a one year total return of 10% 10, 10 up to the maximum. And they have a high, high rated stocks for you. See that here and they have 106. Um, you should be able to, no, they just have 10 at a time. But if you want to na na navigate through the pages, you can just click the number on the page. All right. So if you're interested in an ETF, uh, just simply click click on it. And if all the information there goes up, you can add it to your watch list. Uh, you can also, if you want to print out a report, they do have the report that will print out as a PDF. Should There we are. And the same way that will work with the stocks and the mutual funds. So I'll have kind of a, a one sheet for you for the report on that uh, on that ETF. And it also has the an industry comparison. And if you want, and you can even do this with the mutual funds and the stocks, you can actually add another stock or, or another e ETF in this case. Might be in a separate one. But for instance, if you want to Com compare a few a, a few ETFs uh, that, that that you're interested in, and you want to choose between one of them. This is one option for you, and you can see they even have highlighted certain things that might be more advent that are higher that might be more advantageous when when you look at it. Might not depends on what your investment strategy is, and that'll be your own personal investment strategy. You can see a lot of information here. All right. All right. Mice also has um, has a uh, bank slings. You may have, if you've done financial research before, uh, you may have gone to the library and looked at. We had books that had um, that was pub that were pub published by Weiss in book form. Well, we've gotten rid of those books, and we now have options. Uh, the option, this online option, that you can uh, review banks, and you can see uh, Weiss's uh, safety ratings for for banks. And so this is a way you can search for banks. You can search for what bank you have. Uh, you can build a screener. So you can see uh, banks. So you can filter out. Screener works. It has a very similar inter interface that the previous ones had. Uh, you can see state. So we can uh, narrow down the Missouri. And we, if, if this is a search we want to do, we can see a recent rating on banks. We can see banks in Missouri that uh, are high rated banks. Now, this isn't necessarily a buy and sell one. These are just a longer rating for these banks. They're what my sister called safety ratings. So they're kind of security in the banks here. So here's our rating for the state of Missouri and a rating of A plus to B minus. Um, Let's see if we can find anything that's in the St. Louis area. Of course, some of these might also be located in the St. Louis area. So Cass Commercial Bank, for instance. And you can even do the same thing here. You can run a comparison. Uh, you can see a lot of the information about a bank. You can see where the assets are, what kind of assets they have. Um, you can even uh, do this in industry comparison. I, I find useful so you can see how their uh, uh, asset capitalization is, uh, the quality of, 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 of their assets, um, what kind of a his, history is, whether they're per, out, outperforming um, their, 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 their uh, other, other banks and kind of a rating on this here. So yeah, see how far above the average they are. 
and we can go and you can use this for credit unions as well. And this is going to work very similar. Uh, credit unions are judged on a slightly separate thing. Uh, one of the things I like about Weiss ratings is this, this information is all public, but sometimes um, you, you can't, it's a little bit hard to read because you'll get a sheet of something and Weiss really lets you kind of like clear out and really makes everything very clear on how this, how comparisons work. Let's try to find ourselves a, oh, here, I've already set up a Missouri screener for us. So you can see by the save screenings, we can go back. We can, uh, I can just click on my previous search, which has Missouri credit unions rated a or C plus to an A plus. You can see them here. And so for instance, here's a B plus St. Louis Community Credit Union. And we can go in that and you can even, if you want to, if, if, if you know another bank you wanna compare, you can compare that. So another local credit union. There. So you can begin to compare if you're if you're shopping for credit unions and see uh, see how you might want to shop for that. You you can also look up if you want to look up what these mean. If you're not new to this, you aren't familiar with banking terms, you aren't familiar with other stuff. You can go into the glossary and all the terms that are used there will show up here in the glossary and kind of clarify some of those options for you. All right, let's move on to insurance companies. Uh, Weiss also offers ratings of insurance companies and uh, sort of the parse through some of that information that if you get information from an insurance company, that publicly available information, it can be hard to look look through and this can make it really clear. I guess it's with bank credit unions. Same kind of layout that we saw on those previous stocks, mutual funds, and even the banks and credit unions page. It's a this 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 homepage is up, updated very regularly. Uh, you can build a screener. You can start screening now. Either of these buttons take you to the same spot. Same way with all these other options. Um, so let's go and look look at the one I've already set up a screener here, but let's go and use this screener here. So common, um, you want to find a company that operates in your state. So licensed in. So if you want to shop for an insurance company or want to find out an insurance company that's uh, that's licensed to do operation in Missouri because you might get your search and they might not be licensed in Missouri. So let's go and add that to criteria. And you can see the list, list of states here. So there are 1,700 one, or 1,738 uh, companies licensed to op operate in Missouri. And here they all are. Uh, that's, that's a lot of companies to go to. We, we want to kind of like narrow it down uh, and maybe you look for um, just kind of sort by rating. Um, I'll look for um, ratings that are C minus or better. It's better here. It's narrowed it down to 1400 companies. So it cut out 300 companies. Let's go and narrow it down maybe a little bit more. So insurance type. We're not looking for just any, any insurance. We want to get homeowners insurance. And we're also looking maybe one that also offers not just homeowners, but also offers auto insurance as well. So here we are. Now we've narrowed it down to 600 companies and let's go and list it by rating. So we can see the uh, Weiss ratings here and we can see the name of the uh, insurance company. So we're interested in a company. Maybe we've heard of a company here. We can click click on that. And we can see how they're there. So they have the ranges here and you can see this, the strength as they have it kind of, a, as they break down this basic rating, they break it down into other sort of like other ratings that may or may not be more or less important to you as you shop for insurance. And then there's other uh, affiliates around. Um, you can look at the his, history of the ratings, just just like you could with previous ones. You can see they've gone up, up and down, but, but they've hovered around the same area of this company here. Um, you can compare, you can do a direct comparison. If you want, you can see the comparisons here. Um, you can also look at the industry comparison. So you can see how this, uh, how this particular company does against other uh, members of the industry. It rates higher in some areas and lower in some other areas, which may or may not be something that offers you, uh, which can inform your, your, your decision. 
which allows you to make an even better decision when, when you're using this option. All right. Now, one of the things I, I really like to point out, one of the great tools that Weiss has is this uh, is the Medigap uh, tool. I don't know if anybody uh, is signed up for Medicare or knows somebody that is or somebody that's shopping or will be going into Medicare soon and is curious on how to use Medigap, but this will be very, very useful if you are. Is there anybody out there? You can speak up or you can remain silent if you want to. All right. So across the top on the Weiss Financial Ratings is the Medigap tab. It's right next to the Insurance Company tab. So when you click on the Medigap tab, it's going to reload. And there's some instructions here. And it's going to tell you about a couple of things about what Medicare does and doesn't cover, financial options, uh, how to pick a Medigap plan, uh, view, view rates for each plan, which might come in real handy for you, uh, the different types of plans, how to find the best insurers, uh, finding authorized agents. Um, you can also get you can get this report emailed to you. I'm just going to show you how to load it up on your computer, uh, which is pretty straightforward. So you just put in your name, and you can put in you can put in your own personal email address, and this and it will email you the report, the Medigap report specifically for your area, or you can use um, this dummy email. For the time being, I'm going to use this dummy email. So you put in your age, um, and you can put in your gender, and you can put in your zip code. And the zip code really just kind of narrows it down uh, to your county, uh, and particularly to your state for the insurer that covers in your state. And it takes a while to build, build the report. It has to compile all the data. Um, and I really like how this data comes out. I think it's a, it's, it's, it's one of the, there, there's a lot of useful things in, y, in Weiss financial ratings, um, but I think this is a really good good tool for those uh, for those using Medicare, um, and 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 particularly in this database, this is a tool that um, that the, doesn't appear in the other in the other databases I, I showed you. The the other databases do review stocks, they review mutual funds, they review the exchange traded funds um, in their own special way and add that added value of a rating and the re review of that. Um, but this uh, does have this Medigap tool, which I think is very, very useful, for particularly uh, in, in, in how you're consuming your insurance. So we have it's ready to go. You can view the report and it's going to come, for me, it's going to come in a separate screen. Uh, might download for you on your own personal computer, but it shows up here in the report and uh, a nice 64-page uh, report. Yours may or may not be longer, just depending on age, location, and whatnot, uh, and uh, gender. But if you want to scroll down here, uh, we can see it uh, has a kind of questions you want to go about uh, choosing a provider, a Medigap provider, just kind of covers in kind of a no-nonsense way um, how you can go about choosing your Medigap plans, about the different types of this decisions you want to wait, uh, you want to consider, and how, how you might want to weigh those as you go forward. It has a breakdown of what Medi uh, about what Medicare and Medigap uh, may cover. So you can see just, just the breakdown of what it is, long thing. No reason to go over it in detail. You can spend the time uh, in the future going over it in detail if you want this. Um, and then just what's covered, what percentage is covered by Medicare, uh, what, what, what you end up paying just under straight Medicare coverage. Um, but we'll scroll down. So yeah, you can see lots of pages on that. Uh, so what gaps? may cover so what different parts it covers ambulance and that and here it has breakdown even more so uh kind of a very uh straightforward breakdown of what each type of plan covers so a b c d e f g h i take element in i think n will be eliminated sometime soon the most popular plan is f but uh as to what it is um so it has what the most popular plan is uh, if you know someone that lives in these other states where they have their own kind of state coverage uh they have a different standardization so it might not be exactly what you want but we're in missouri right now and i figure most of you are in missouri if not maybe illinois as well um it may or may not matter much for you but you may have a loved one that you may be using this tool for that in those states you can read the details but what i like is as you go down and you've decided on a type of plan what Medigap, what Weiss Ratings does in, in this um, in this situation is it personalizes this this form for you. So it explains Plan A, and for everybody, this Plan A exp explanation will be the same. 
but it will have the insurance companies and their rating uh, from Weiss as what they are, but it will also break down the, the, um, the premiums for those companies. Uh, they're required under plan, uh, uh, if you sign up for plan A, each one of these companies is required to give the same coverage. So, uh, and this is the cost for that coverage. And so you can begin to research these companies. You can make, make a note of these companies with plan A and you can see uh, the lower rated companies and what their uh, premiums are monthly and the rating. So you can make, make a note of these companies and it will have this for each plan. I'll list out for each plan. Does anybody have a question about this Medigap tool as we're going through? All right, I'm gonna scroll down. Each plan is uh, laid out here and the annual premiums or monthly premiums if they charge a diff different, if they charge by the year or by the month. Sorry, it's not scrolling for me. There we go. And they've got the high, they've got two plans, a high, high deductible plan and a low, low deductible plan, or I guess the normal deductible plan and then the high deductible plan. And when we get down here, every company that's listed above will have its list in here. And, and of course, you can also look at a company. You can also copy the company and then you can even search again in Weiss ratings here. So you can just search search here and see those more details like, like we searched before. All right. So that's why Weiss financial ratings. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next option, which is value line. Um, va value line, you may be familiar if you've done any kind of uh, investing research. Uh, we do have the, the, uh, a lot of print publications from value line at the, at, at the headquarters branch. Um, but those also all, all those things are available here online on the uh, online resource uh, here at value line. Um, so I covered the value line university. Let's go back to the value line homepage. And you'll get to this by going to that uh, research option, um, then the business owner and investor, and going to the finance and investing page. Okay. So here in this, we've got all the publications here. We'll see the ones that are, uh, you know what? I need to go back and access this again. Because it had logged me out. So if you go in value line to the dashboard, you'll uh, see its pub publication. So they've got fund, fund advisor plus option survey. They even have this uh, option uh, select, selection and opinion, which is well known for its, uh, its model portfolios, um, which are kind of por stock portfolios that cover um, uh, stocks of uh, various type, types of uh, gain potential, risk and gain potentials. Um, and they uh, cover what, what they've changed, why they chose those stocks and options like that. Um, they also have this Fund Advisor Plus, um, which is a, pub, which is a pub, pub, publication, uh, but you can also use in the Fund Advisor Plus, you can also use it uh, to, to screen for, uh, for mutual funds. I'm just gonna kind of point this out. It's not the best one, uh, but they do have the screener. Uh, works very similar to what we saw with the um, <clears throat> with the Y screener, uh, you can set up your, your returns options. Uh, you can set up very simple ty types of dis descriptions if, if you actually know a fund. Uh, you, you can actually search search that there and it will have, it's gonna be kind of a tear sheet of a fund, just a PDF. Uh, one here, you can do that. Just a real quick kind of layout of the fund. Uh, not as in depth as some of our other ones, so I don't like to spend too much time on it. But it's good if you're researching to get us get other opinions on the funds, kind of see how it goes out. Um, there's not too much added value here. Uh, it's just good for res resection. The only real added value is this rank, so it's above average. It's overall rank, and it's risk. It's have a higher risk there. Um, and so we can also see they've they've got uh, these survey issues. So they publish one one once a month, uh, just report on the kind of the fund market and you just a real quick kind of layout of funds and the what's out there in the mutual fund market. Let's 
Some of the, the pub, publications, lots of publications, feel, feel free to explore it yourself. One of the key ones I like to point out, uh, they have a daily uh, mar uh, industry market analysis and a calendar. So they have, um, so you can go to markets here, it'll be an overview. So they'll tell about kind of what the market's doing. They'll have in industry reports. So industry reports on telecom services. So you get to begin to look what, uh, what industries look, look like. Uh, what is that? Oh, the calendar. Yeah. So the e economic calendar might come in handy for somebody that's uh, that's interested in um, in kind of more often trading more often. Maybe not somebody that might be a fund investor, but somebody that might be an ETF or a stock trader. And they'll have a calendar that shows uh, coming up. So have uh, re reports that are coming up. Our next report for tomorrow, we're going to get some advanced retail sales reports. It's going to come in at 8:30 tomorrow, uh, Eastern Time, and then um, or 12 a.m. Um, and then some uh, manufacturing inventory sales, some reports on that. So you'll go in and you'll see when like the Fed report is, you'll see this economic calendar there. That's what might be useful for you if you're an investor or more regular investor that likes to do daily or week weekly type of trading to kind of get ready on that. All right. So let's look at stocks. That's kind of what the strength of value line is. So each each one of these databases has their strengths, but they cover other areas. So so one of the strengths with 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 value line is you can look look up companies, and they'll have in depth quarterly update reports on stocks. So for instance, you want to research uh, Disney as a stock or Disney even as a company if you wanted to do that. Um, just uh, cert, type, type in the company name or symbol here, and it'll have the company information here. Uh, they'll walk you through about the securities banner, just kind of a little tutorial. We'll close that out for today. Uh, they'll tell you the financial strength, uh, recent ratings of when that was upgraded. And they'll even have these uh, TER reports, these PDF reports. So its most re recent report was um, April 30th, 2021. Think about that. At the end of the month, they'll probably have another one. You can see they, they're kind of regular on the quarter for these reports on these, uh, particularly these uh, larger stocks. Uh, the safety, the timeliness, and you can see even these ratings are updated a little bit faster than these uh, PDF reports are. But they have commentary on 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 where they think it's headed, uh, what some information is on the back. Uh, real quick information for you: a couple hundred words, maybe not even that, on a company. And so you can see how a company is moving, uh, going, and so you can begin to become more informed about each each, each one of these stocks. Uh, some scores, some uh, st stability, price stability, all kinds of information on a stock that Value Line provides. It's really added resource on on stocks, and that's what uh, Value Line is really strong on in 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 individual stocks uh, and those pu publicly traded companies. So I have already pointed out. Um, so they do have an e ETF screener, and we'll go in, and that's under the dashboard. It's new for them, and um, <coughs> it's it's still being refined. So I just like to show the the new ETF service. So I, I'm I'm just going to kind of point out that it's here, and kind of let it kind of be at its own. But 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 you can do um, higher rated ones. You can see their um, their their highest rating is one. So if you just want to search, for instance, just their highest. Um, ETF rating, and you may want to do uh, good performance. So you want to do a one-year performance that's greater than or equal to, we'll do 10%. And you can run that screen. So 100, 100 matches for, for ETFs. And here they are, uh, the ticker name for those, uh, for those exchange-traded funds. Um, you can show all 100 here. And if you're interested in one, kind of sticks out for you. Go and click on that ticker. And it's just going to give you a small little tear sheet report uh, that you can review for these. Let's real quick break down what the rank is, what the risk is for the particular stock, uh, how it breaks down what their what the industries they're invested in. Uh, this is a non-US, it's primarily it's 100 percent invested in non-US stocks. Um, and it's spread uh, some of the top holdings. And, and we'll see some other ways that I find Morningstar is good for mutual funds and, and ETFs. I, I, I like for breaking this stuff down, which is what we're going to soon get to. We're going to soon get to Morningstar. So that's. 
and they've got mutual funds. I'll pass on that. All right. Let's look at Morningstar here. Let me have me log in again. I'm going to go through the process of logging in the Morningstar again for us so we can see how to get to these resources. So from the St. Louis County Library uh, webpage, go into research, and down here to the business owner and investor, finance and investing. And we're doing Morningstar Investment Research Center. Okay, that is loaded up here on the home homepage, uh, hops to equity funds, ETFs, planning and education. Um, one of the things I want to point out first, uh, be, be, before you look look into stocks or funds or ETFs, as is, is, is I want to point out the articles and the videos uh, on here, which I find very, very useful in my own research. research. Um, they, they have uh, investors there. And they write up just generally about industry or market information that allows you to sort out. So you're, if you're looking to uh, just see reports on the ETF specialist, you can just click on the ETF specialist and here will be information from the ETF specialists. I see something was published just a couple of days ago, uh, review the ESG integration and market re representation. Uh, ETFs are on pace for another record year. You can see information on that. But let's say you want to do something. So investing specialist is another one we, we can look at. Um, you can just see this is just generally uh, information about investing. Christine Benz is one of the big, big writers. Uh, if you're interested in um, what I learned from my faux retirement. So this is something about kind of like stepping away from work and kind of like looking at a kind of a faux retirement. Just a, our article about that, about uh, some less lesson learned about what this author did on um, on their time off with uh, with uh, how, how they invested, some, some advantages and some other options they have here. So that's in the articles and videos section that I'll have and there would be, and there would be videos in here. It's taking its time, isn't it? So I like to point that out. Um, yeah, so is that, I'm gonna move on to I want to point out one of the main things with Morningstar is here is this search box. That little search box in the up, up, up a corner is a way you can look for e ETFs. Uh, you can search for mutual funds. You can search for uh, and stocks. So we did, um, so an ETF is, so it's all ETFs here. But um, so if you're looking for a particular type of one under name, you can just search for that and it'll bring it up. And, and we'll cover the de details of what this is. Oh, this is a stock actually, multi-factor mid cap. So, um, so yeah, so it's listed under equ equ equities, but um, we'll go on. So, so you can use that search box to search for I guess I, and any company. So company here, that brings that up. It's running slow today. Is that so for each financial product um, we can see across the top um, there is a um, so for equities just stocks um, you can see there's a, there's a sub sub menu listed for the overview and that's what we're on here uh, and you'll see the market fair value just kind of what the market's doing right now uh, the general stock market gainers and losers kind of like what we saw with weiss ratings but it's a little bit more uh, this has a little bit more news, news heavy things. So it has uh, analyst reports, uh, some market commentary, and some videos about information there. We can look in at markets. And this is the, when we go to markets, it's going to have each kind of um, each sector kind of bro broken down by its strengths and weaknesses. Here we can see different types of markets across the world. Here, 
uh, once again, this is a very similar page to what we saw before, but it will have this market barometer. Uh, so if you're really in, 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 interested in this information, what's going on, some commodity data, uh, high, high gainers, high losers, um, research, and, and this is gonna be research on uh, re recent research that, that's been done by their, uh, by their an analysts and re researchers there, uh, very detailed information analyst reports in the stock market, some sample portfolios that they have. So core pick lists, uh, inf information they have on pick lists. So um, ratings and performance. So this is kind of a basic screener for, for, uh, for, for Morningstar. So you can actually just do their very narrow uh, kind of search. If you want to search high-rated stocks with a low uh, with a low uncertainty rating, and here are the stocks here, you just uh, click on the stock, and it'll take you through that. Or we'll, we'll review a particular stock page here, or you can also use their screener, and the screener allows you to do the same way we did with Weiss is compare, but but you get. You know, Weiss has their own analysts and Morningstar has, has their own analysts. So they might be looking for something else. So this is going to help you um, do that research if you use both of these resources to uh, search for stocks. So, so it's one, uh, one, what one we looked for before it should be, there we are. So you can be, begin to select that or, or you can actually uh, just go and take off uh, the search for a particular stock. And you can begin to do those uh, screening uh, narrow down. So you can look for stocks in a particular uh, sector you want. Uh, you can look at um, five-year growth. Look at one that has okay growth. And you can begin to uh, com compare these, not that Tesla and these are the ones that you can compare, but you can uh, compare these and that'll add it up here. Your search, yeah. And then, And you can even have more, um, you can do show, show more and do that. And you should be able to print these up and it'll remember those stocks that, that you had before and I'll make a PDF for you of, those, of that page. Where is that page? It's not loaded up all the way. Oh, shucks. So you find a stock. It's not offering, there should be a thing here that is a tool. That's another note I have to make. That, that allows you to have those stocks as comparisons so you can see them side by side. If you'll have that here. All right, that's the, the top to the funds option. And this will be a review of mutual funds. I see you can search for a particular fund by using the search bar. Uh, but the funds will cover other things. I want to point out a couple things with this. So, so the little view is similar to the uh, page we saw on the stocks page. Um, if you click to the mutual funds, it's going to have um, recent analyst reports. So it'll have um, recent analyst reports. So here we have an analyst report that was published today on this particular stock. So they're always analyzing a, a particular stock on this particular mutual fund. So they're always analyzing mutual funds. Uh, and you can sort it by the report date, which is the default, the analyst ratings, uh, and the star rating. So for Morningstar, um, the rating, the star rating is effectively, effectively what Morningstar told me was that the star rating is past performance and the analyst rating is expected future performance from the analyst. So that's how they break down those ratings in a simple terms. Um, so that's in the mutual funds, uh, the target date series, uh, you may be with your work or something, or you may have a personal thing that you have a target re retirement date. And some mutual funds are set up to have a target re retirement date, where they expect you to have 25 years of investment where you're doing this and you're expected to hit a certain target. So it, it's the people that invest in those mutual funds have a plan to kind of like make those mutual funds hit a particular target. So 2045, you have a target date there. Uh, but let's look at this college savings fund. This is uh, something here, something that's I've been 
inter interested in myself with uh, two, two young children about planning that, uh, you can sort it by state and sort by recent analyst upgrading, but I just wanna show uh, folks this issuing state. So let's go to the Missouri one, just to pull out there, just to see how that's listed. So there's a Missouri one, uh, Momos, Missouri's 529 education plan. You can see it has a silver rating and you can even pull out this PDF, the latest report. So the latest report goes back to the October, 2020. So about six months ago or so. Let me pull this up and pull up this uh, double click it. Pull up the uh, rating here. You can see it's got a silver rating. You can see its performance over years, expected performance. Uh, kind of, kind of the, the the breakdowns for age, and I think it's a really useful tool if you're looking at um, at building a college savings portfolio. Uh, you can see the rating met methodology. Uh, one of the things I think Morningstar, not, I, I know Morningstar has that gives it advantage if you're interested in this type of type of thing is sustainability. Um, and so that it's going to cover how they have sustainability ratings. So they'll rate mutual funds based on a carbon score and sustainability. And also we'll see they have, I think it's controversy rating. They'll have a controversy rating. And so we can uh, use, use a screener to, um, to kind of sort out and be, begin to find some funds. So let's go and do that. We want gold funds. And we want just uh, in, in, in investor levels and not institutional levels. Those institutional levels are for like universities and stuff. Um, and we can do that. And you can see we have 24 gold rated funds here. So it's just, I'm just going to randomly choose a few. They'll just let us pick up the five on the kind of the comparison one here. Now I uh, I was looking before on those stock ones and they have the fund comparison and the export. So we have the fund comparison. That's what I was looking for before and it should have a side-by-side -side comparison of these funds with the key, with key points in those funds uh, laid out. There we are. So here's the, uh, the funds I chose, uh, the ratings laid out, some side-by-side -side ones and they have um, this per performance chart. So you can, they have each fund compared against the other fund where on, on a 1000 growth chart. So you can see how the funds have done over the last three years, uh, which ones have performed better than other ones. If that's strictly what you want to look at, uh, you can see some trailing performance. You can see how they've uh, dis distributed their, their investments. So you can have that comparison there. This is a really good tool if you're comparing funds and you want to decide um, what funds you may want to get into, uh, where they're um, dis distributed to. Um, so that's the option there on the, using the screener. Uh, you can also use a very similar one to do a fund compare. Uh, you can also do a find similar. Uh, if you have a fund you want, you want to invest in a similar fund or you want to, uh, or somebody told you about something, but you aren't quite sure about it, you can find similar funds. So um, let's look at this global, this global, global equity one. So I've never done it before. Or they'll, and they'll have similar funds to what you've look, looked at. So there's 355 similar funds, and you can do the same thing where you choose them and then you can begin to compare information on that. So yeah, and then you can narrow, narrow it down. You can show high rated funds. So if you want to get out of one fund and into another fund, uh, if you want to use higher ratings, all, all kinds of fun options for the funds. This is where I think Morningstar this is the strongest one in its funds, one of the strong points here. Um, and you can do the comparison, which you've already seen one comparison, uh, compares one fund to another. It's two, it's a comparison of two funds there. So with e ETFs, it's, it's a similar break, breakdown that, that you have. Um, for ETFs, sort of thing there. It's got a screener, it's got some uh, recent favorites that some picks from the analysts. So analyst favorites for ETFs. So you can begin to filter out and see some 
information here. One, one of the things I'd like to show, since I've showed this uh, fun before, Is, um, is 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 how to use this uh, fund information, the, the de detailed uh, information on a fund page, because I showed you it's about I mentioned about the sus sustainability and the carbon score. So once this loads up, we'll show you that. You see across this top top here, there's a one page report, a global fund report, fund sustainability report, and that carbon report. And those will be um, PDFs that'll uh, kick kick out for you. So there's a full full analysis here, and you can read out why they made their decisions to give it the rating they gave it here. Uh, it breaks down some simple stuff that you may want to know. First off, expense ratio, uh, minimum initial investment. Uh, one of the things I like about Morningstar is this in, in, interactive chart. If you open up the interactive chart, it has um, it's going to have past performance of the fund. So you can set it as a year. You can set it um, however many marks you have. You, you can even display its its default display for the fund is a 10,000 uh, growth, but you can change different types of growths. Uh, if you want, you can have a dot growth. We're gonna keep it at the, at the default. You you can even adjust the date if you want here too, but you can com com compare other funds. So compare Other funds there. This is another, another way you can compare on those comparison pages. This this will be there too. So you can see how these funds uh, compare against themselves over the course of the date change we, we have, or you can even uh, span it out for 10 years and see which one they have performed better over the 10 years. You can look at the last year. Um, however, you like to do that. You can zoom in and out on the your skip. I was going to point out um, that we've got the risk here. Where is this carbon score? So here's our sustainability rating and your carbon rating if you're interested in this. And you can see how, um, how the sustainability information is here. Uh, score percentage, you can see that it's kind of performing above average on its sustainability score. Uh, and then there's carbon metrics here. Uh, carbon risk score, a little bit higher. Fossil fuel investments, how much money is invested in fossil fuels. And for any uh, mutual fund, you can see how it breaks down. Uh, mutual funds here. Now, one of the last things I want to show about Morningstar as we get up to our last 10 minutes here is uh, here in this planning and ed education option, as I want to uh, point out the uh, portfolio x-ray, but also the retirement cost calculator. I'll just do a real, real quick breakdown of the retirement cost calculator if you're saving for retirement. There is a college cost calculator, and that comes and that'll come up later. So you can uh, figure out what your annual retirement in income is. You can put in your age. You can put in your planned retirement age. Put in your gender, if you'd like. Um, annual retirement income from other sources. So this would be like Social Security, or if you know you have a passive income coming from somewhere or wherever. Uh, your current savings. Um, and of course, the, the SEC plan has that here. So your annual savings, maybe saving $2,000 a year. Return, kind of a basic uh, return percentage somewhat conservative, and then your risk-free um, rate after retirement there, so as you reduce your risk. So you can see your savings at the time of retirement here, and your annual retirement income is uh, estimated to be at $55,820. So you can start to begin to do adjustments to your annual savings, what savings you want. Maybe you're looking at your annual return, maybe you want to kick, kick that up. Once again, those are personal decisions. Um, so if you're like, well, I want to, instead of making 55,000, I want to have it be 60,000 a year. This will tell you based on those other uh, variables that you really need to bump, bump up and save $2,400 a year, 200 bucks a month or about. Okay, um, things I want to point out is how to use this uh, portfolio x-ray. So a lot of you may have already begun to build your portfolio. It may be in different spots. You may have the mutual funds or ETFs or whatever you need. This portfolio x-ray will allow you to look look inside and see where your money is at, how it's di distributed from different things. A lot of uh, financial companies such as Vanguard or John Hancock or Charles Schwab or, or all these other companies, uh, Scott Train, whatever, have, have have these tools available. Sometimes they might be focused in that. You might have and just what you have invested with them. 
Um, so you can be begin to set, set your benchmark. So wherever your retirement spot might be, uh, for somebody my own personal age, it's kind of a mix of 80, 20, it's closer to 85, 15, but this, this lets you know. And so you can begin to uh, pull out um, tools here. So I've got some stuff written down here. So if you've got some ETFs here, and you've got, so you can do it by amount you have in an ETF, or you can do it by weight uh, if you want, uh, or units you have, so the number of stocks you have. But for the instance, it's totally out of time. I'll do, so you just enter in the ticker symbol of your um, option here. And if you have some stock disbursements, maybe that. So for example, here, this is just a, just a real, real quick example. Um, it breaks down those, uh, those stocks, those ETFs into uh, various options. Actually, we'll cancel that. We want to hide the holdings and benchmarks. There we are. And it shows you how your stocks are broken down globally, um, what, what, you compare, what your investment comparison is to the benchmark you set, where your stock comes again globally, how your fixed income is set up, if you're interested in that, your stock style. <laughs> performance over last time based against your benchmark, uh, sustainability score. I just see this uh, spinning wheel of death every time I go in. So it doesn't compare to that, but I think if you just have mutual funds, it just, uh, it'll show that. Um, top holdings, some stock overlap. So you can see where your stocks overlap. So you can see where your investments are and what, uh, what investment types are held in uh, what companies and how much a percentage of investments are. You can also print this out by going to the generate report. I, I hope everyone can still hear me okay. Um, sorry for not checking in. I know I have a lot to cover. <laughs> so I made this an hour and a half. My programs are usually an hour long. There's a lot of information in each of these uh, databases here. But you can see the, uh, the portfolio snapshot. It gives you a long uh, snapshot of your portfolio, uh, past performance of the portfolio all combined as one part, uh, how, how it compares in investments against, um, against the benchmark, which is this clear mark here. Of course, I just did a very very good sample. You can see that my portfolio, sample portfolio needs probably some improvement to meet uh, some of the benchmarks. But yeah. Where my stock intersection is, where I crossed on stocks. So does anybody have any questions while I have these last five minutes here? I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't, I didn't go quite as fast as I wanted to. It's a lot of information to cover. something you want me to cover again. Okay, well, thank you very much. And then uh, uh, tomorrow, um, I should send out uh, the, uh, the copy of this, um, of the slideshow. And, um, And you'll also get in about three business days, we'll get the YouTube uh, link up of this presentation. Okay, I thank you all very, very much for attending, for uh, attending, and I hope this is very, very useful for you, both the education and these uh, these databases. They are they are very intense and in-depth databases. And if you need any questions, our contact information is here. You can chat at us to use it. Uh, you can email us about using those things, uh, or you can give us a call. And I thank you very much, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. <laughs> it is a lot of information. I, I, I probably need to break it down into two parts, I think. But I thank you all for attending on my, on my first presentation of this. <laughs> thank you.
I'll go and stick around for like five five more minutes if you all have any questions though. I'll stop the recording though.